and welcome to Talking FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys and welcome to a very special video indeed because today we are going to be discussing the most exciting Barcelona B talents that you need to be watching ahead of this Sunday's playoff final. They are 90 minutes away from the Segunda division, which will be a massive achievement for Garcia Pimienta's side. They were brilliant yesterday, so inspired, so energetic, enthusiastic, and overall just really determined to get the job done. They beat Badajoz on penalty kicks, and if you haven't seen the match review for that game, that right there is over on More Talk FCB. But of course, full spotlight now on Sunday's final. Who should we be watching? Because indeed, Barcelona B now know their opponents in Sunday's final. They will be facing off against Sabadell on Sunday, the 26th of July at 8pm local time. And I've got to say there, when you look at the recent record against Sabadell, Barcelona B coming out on top more often than not. And with their performances in the playoff quarterfinal and the semi-final, they will be going into that game full of confidence. And the one thing you get from this group, just like we saw last night, it's that unity. There's a real togetherness amongst Pimienta's men, and this team, they are ready to make that next step up. And so if we do here, kick right off with the players you need to be watching with goalkeeper Iñaki Peña. He's the first man here on the list, and he's a player that we all know very, very well, very familiar with there in the first team, effectively Barcelona's third goalkeeper. But will it continue to be the case? Because I mentioned before there, Arnau Tenas, he most likely next season will try and make that step up to Barcelona B. And if he does that, could Iñaki Peña be promoted to the first team if Neto was to leave? And that's why Sir Certainly, you should be keeping an eye here on Iñaki Peña, somebody who's very, very comfortable there playing out of the back. He made a brilliant save yesterday in the penalty shootout, of course, to give Barcelona B that victory. And I think certainly Iñaki Peña, he's been knocking on the first team door now for some time. We could have taken the gamble and actually promoted him last season instead of signing Neto. But this summer, it remains a possibility. Keep an eye on him. Up next is another player that we know very, very well from the first team setup, and that is none other than Ronald Araujo. Of course, a player who's been really, really impressive since Sport will return. Kike Setien has placed a lot of trust there in Ronald Araujo, and he's certainly repaid him. In the first team, he's shown real composure in that team. He's shown incredible pace. We all saw that there in the final game against Alaves. He is absolutely rapid. And what I want to say, though, aside from Araujo, not just there about his ability, not just the fact there that he's still just 21 years old. He has a a massive, massive ceiling in terms of where he can get to in his career. But not only that, I want to talk there about the personality. Because obviously there from Kike Setien, he was given permission to rejoin Barcelona B to help them here from the semi-finals. But obviously, he could have gone back there with a different attitude. He could have gone back there to Barcelona B feeling as though, yeah, I've kind of moved past this now. I've kind of moved on. I'm going to be a first team player. I don't really need to be worrying about Barca B. But he didn't. He went back there. He put in more effort. He he actually looked even better than he had done in the past. He's used that first team experience to make him a better player. And he was outstanding last night. Really, really was. Different class. And of course, he scored a brilliant penalty kick too. I'm very excited for the future of Ronald Araujo. Another player, though, that you should certainly be keeping an eye on is none other than Barcelona B left back Sergio Akiemi, who's the 22-year-old. Interesting there that he's not all that young, 22 years old. He's got a very decent amount there of experience behind him. And I do mention this because he was very, very good yesterday in the semi-final. He caught the eye of many of us watching, and he has done right the way through the season for Barcelona B. And he has been on the fringes a few times this season of actually getting there into the Barcelona first team, getting a few minutes under his belt. And I do mention Akiemi me here right now because obviously this summer if Junior Firpo leaves if he actually goes out the door and we're left there with Jordi Alba as our only left back if we didn't want to go out into the market could we see somebody like Akiemi who's 22 years old like I say he is of a good age there to come in play some minutes in the first team he has the talent he's a really good player there down the left hand side he's got pace he's good defensively made some really good interceptions and tackles yesterday and I would keep an eye on him particularly there in the final 
Which brings us on there to another player who's also been really, really close to getting some minutes in the first team. He trained very, very heavily with Kike Setien's side during the time where football was suspended, but it didn't quite happen. He got an injury at such a bad time. But Monchu, for me, is a very exciting player. The Barcelona B captain, the heart of the midfield. I think he's such an energetic player in that area. He gets from box to box. But in and around the area, he can really unleash a strike. Over the two playoff games so far, he's been really, really effective in both them. He scored a brilliant goal there in the quarterfinal. He was inches away from scoring in the semi-final. Denied twice very, very nicely by the opposition goalkeeper. But I think as well, aside from that ability, I think what we've seen from him during these playoff games and right the way through the season is that leadership. Yes, he's the captain, but he also takes on that responsibility. He's just 20 years old, but he already has a really good aura around him. He leads the team. He drives the team. And of course, yesterday in that penalty shootout, you saw him step up. The final taker, he dispatched that penalty and you could see what it meant to him. He's a really, really good player in this team, a huge player for Garcia Pimienta, and certainly Monchu, there's a lot of talent in this young man. Another midfielder that we simply have to discuss is none other than Ilash Muriba, who's a 17-year-old player, and I have to say, one of the most exciting prospects coming out of La Masia right now, it is Ilash. He is absolutely sensational there in that midfield area, and you will want to keep an eye, no doubt about it, on this young man's development. He's a centre midfield player, like I say, at the heart of that midfield. He has been compared during his youth career to Paul Pogba in terms there of having that athleticism, having that drive in midfield, but also combining that with brilliant, brilliant technical ability in terms of dribbling, close control, passing range. He has got it all in his locker. And honestly, playing in that six role in midfield, he is absolutely outstanding. And his talent has been so much so that Garcia Pimienta, even there at the age of just 17, he's put him into the Barcelona B team. Right now he's registered with the Juvenile A team, but he's made this step up and he's made it well. He was brilliant there in the quarterfinal of the playoffs, so much so that he started in yesterday's semi-final. And I think Sir Certainly there for Ilash Moriba, so much talent, so much potential. He has a really bright future ahead of him. Let's wait and see what he can become. We move on now to the wider area in terms of Conrad De La Fuente and absolutely this guy is top draw. He is absolutely brilliant. I've loved watching him. Over the two playoff games, he for me has been the standout player for Barcelona. He's only recently turned 19 years old. Just earlier on this month, he turned 19, still very young. Also another player who is with the Juvenile A team who's made this step up to Barcelona B. And Conrad, he hasn't looked back. This step up to Barcelona B, he's made it look easy. He really, really has. He scored twice there in the playoff in the quarterfinal and of course yesterday providing that crucial assist. It was a brilliant run down the left-hand side. He cuts it back. Brilliant cross and a really, really good moment again for Conrad. And I think when you look at him here, I think another season at Barcelona B in the Segunda, that would be amazing. I think to make that step up there, to Barca B permanently, to have a good season there in the Spanish second tier and then perhaps we could see another Ansu Fati story, another exciting exciting wide player going to the first team. He has that potential and certainly for Barcelona and the United States national team, the future is looking good. We finish though with the match winner from yesterday's game and indeed the man who is going to be leading the line for Barcelona B in their playoff final. It is Ray Menage who, like I say, eight minutes from time yesterday scored an absolutely brilliant header. It was a good ball in, like I say, from Conrad, but he had to get all that power behind it and it was a really good finish, a clinical finish from Ray Menage. And it might surprise you guys, but this guy here, he's actually 23 years old. He's not all that young, Ray Menage. He's somebody who has had a career in Spanish football. He does have experience here and certainly in the Segunda I think he'd be a really really good addition to this team but of course a lot of people are saying can he go further than that we've seen him a few times in and around the first team he's trained under Kike Setien he has been a part there of the first team setup at times and he was on the bench earlier on in the season against Atafe and I was quite surprised actually the fact we have had some striker troubles we have had some problems there at centre forward this season I maybe would have liked to have seen Ray Menage given an opportunity because he clearly can score goals. And for Albania, his country there, he's been outstanding. At senior level, in the Albanian national team, he's been very much a part there of their Euro 2020 qualifiers. He scored at senior level. And I know a lot of Albanians out there, you guys have been in the comments, you are very, very excited about this man. And I certainly hope on Sunday, he can deliver the goal again to send Barsabi to the Segunda.
So those right there, guys, are the players who I am most excited about heading into Sunday's final. And it is good to watch Barca be. It is good here to get involved in the young players who are coming through, to see that enthusiasm, to see just a bit of youth, a bit of exuberance there. Players who are giving everything, who are working really, really hard to make that next step. And of course, those are the players too. Honourable mentions there to Georges Cuenca, to Ludovic Rice. There's players in this team, certainly for Barcelona B, who can emerge, who do have the talent. And I think Sunday's final... It's a massive game for our club. I hope that it goes in our favour. Like I say, we do have a good record when playing Sabadell. And to be honest, I've got all the hope. I've got all the trust in Garcia Pimienta and his young team to see the job through. Lots more coming up ahead of that game, of course. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Who's impressed you most? Who are you most excited to be watching? And is there anybody that you could see from this team making that step up to the Barca senior side? Let me know, guys, all of your thoughts in the comments down below. Like I say, plenty more to come. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca. Oh, no, 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 no.